Welcome to the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers with you, here to help you with some inspiration to get those aspirations out in the world. Well, folks, put your matches away because the big old Aries full moon is happening on September 29th, and it is uncontained. <laughs> Woo! We'll be talking about that on episode 41 part a of the podcast that's right this is part a we got part b which is a patron exclusive for my patreon the patreon.com forward slash awake space you guys will find out how to surf the very wild cosmic tide house by house you can look forward to that this monday afternoon when it drops through the patreon so what else is happening? Well, we've got a crazy week ahead. The energy is going to continue to build as we move towards that full moon and the pressure is going to be hot. We could see a lot of things go on with this big old full moon. And one of those could be a government shutdown and the fracturing of, of the tentative alliance that Kevin McCarthy has. Um, obviously, it's crumbling, but he could be ousted as a leader because there is an alliance dissolved in that full moon. I talked a little bit about that on TikTok. Uh, in this episode, I'll run you through what I think is going to be seen in the headlines as per the September monthly mundane forecast. Yeah, that's where I say, this is what I think is going to be up in the headlines. And then we're talking to Casey Felton Louie, natal astrologer. She's back. We're talking about the tentative agreement for the WGA strike. And you know what? We had to re-record the first part of the podcast because I was very organized. Very and had the podcast all in the can, all recorded on Saturday. And, you, and and I was a bad astrologer because I've been busy and I wasn't I wasn't as studious of the charts as I should have been. And when I looked at it this morning, I, I told Casey, I said, how much you want to bet? I'm going to have to re-record our podcast. And she's like, what? No, I don't know. We haven't heard anything from the union yet. I'm like, I don't know. I think you're going to get an agreement. Why? You'll find out in the segment where where Casey and I are talking about it. Uh, I'll be giving a little shout out and a little li- little segment um, because it's an interesting week and and we might want to um, we might want to have some creative ways of dealing with the energy and then we have our patron shout outs and Casey's with me through the rest of that part of the episode. So I think you guys will enjoy that. We recorded that on Saturday where we did patron shout outs, talked a little bit about the Saturn book because Casey edited that for me as always. She's amazing. And then, um, we do astrology Q and a at the end of the episode. Thank you. Patrons. I'll answer some questions in part B part B the patron only episode of episode 41. I've got to find a way to do this. So it's not like 41A, 41B, number one dog. I don't know. I don't know. Um, You might feel a little saucy and sassy with the full moon and Aries coming up, or you might just end up feeling like the Hulk. We'll find out. Uh, and, And when we go through the, the lunations of the week, which is up next. I don't know about you, but I can't wait till Pluto is in freaking Aquarius and Mars gets the hell out of Libra. That's going to happen faster. Mars moves out of Libra in October. Um, I, I look forward to that. Keeping my schedule has been like near on impossible. So, uh, <laughs> Don't worry, patrons, you're getting your horoscopes, I promise. Um, It's just been wild. Uh, So much, so much, so much. We had a great coffee with Lori on Sunday, though. It was really nice. Uh, Let's see. Let me pull up our headlines. I just had that file open. Where did you go, file? It's so annoying when you have 500 tabs. Couldn't that be like a song? I 
got 500 tabs open. All right, we start the week off with the moon in Aquarius, all right? And it's going to stay there till the 26th. Let me grab this so I can read it. What do I expect? I think we can see a big windstorm brewing, you know, storms of all kinds gathering speed, especially um, like in the like this time it's 104 a.m pacific you know this is probably about the time we're going to see some of that wind kick up but even more so when the moon is in a trine with mars we could see some real big stuff come in real big blowers and things that are very unpredictable like tornadoes microbursts um water spouts possibility uh tropical storms tropical depressions hurricane like winds winter storms it's in quotation marks i know you can't see me um issues with internet or cell towers and networks issues with computer chips or semiconductors this is what i think we'll see in the headlines uh we could see some seismic activity between 5.5 to 7.0 i have not looked at directions this is global anywhere with an active seismic zone uh intense wind and dust sandstorms lightning and hail stock market and other markets will be extremely volatile and and that makes sense uh i wrote this at the beginning of the month but we've got the government shutdown looming so that all makes sense now electrical failures or equipment failures that deal with electricity and or it could be plants that create things like solar panels electric cars etc that could all be up up on deck um let's see air accidents and that could be anything in the air it could be a drone a missile or air transportation of any kind we could also see issues with labor relations technical delays and equipment failures or all of it and that would be later in this lunation um probably by like 11 20 a.m pacific tomorrow that's like 2 20 p.m um we'll start seeing things get a little wonky we could see issues with air traffic control we could see high speed rail problems missiles rockets and drones misfire or accidentally strike sensitive targets again this is global power plant and chemical plant issues and accidents issues with labor intensify all right now i said there was no resolution just yet but it's a tentative agreement so we'll split the difference i was half right not the other um it's funny when i looked at it earlier in the month um i was seeing something i missed until this morning gets us all all right september 26th through the 28th we have the moon in pisces and we could see severe rainstorms uh issues with dams levees flooding severe weather this is global it could be in any direction i haven't been able to just look at the directions right yet because <laughs> you have no idea what this I, my to-do list has me overwhelmed right now mars can move right on to scorpio i would appreciate it um having a natal mars in libra is a good thing i'm not trashing anybody all right uh we've got people charged with espionage or exposed we could see entertainment studios exposed uh political rhetoric and propaganda discussed expo exposed or pro uh propelled so we're gonna see a lot basically uh, religious beliefs denounced or discussed or scandal of a religious figure. This could be a Scientology scandal. Furthermore, pharmaceutical breakthroughs and or breakthroughs in treatment. Uh, healthcare companies sued or goes bankrupt. Hospitals closed. Healthcare crisis. Uh, poisoning, poison darts, bad drugs laced. Drug cartels could be up. Um, water rights cause conflict shipping boating accidents toxic waste poison water supply issues mass marine animal fish die off or stranding these are all potentials they could be happy things too like mommy and baby whale reunited I, that would be a nicer way to look at it huh uh naval skirmishes would be something else it could just be you know saber rattling oh and then it's actually uh 
Yeah, it, it is the 28th, really late on the 28th, really late at night, um, almost the early hours of the morning on the East Coast. The moon moves into Aries on the tw late 28th because it's at six degrees at uh, 2.20 something a.m. Pacific for the full moon. That's five. It's like 529 Eastern. So 229 Pacific. Um, so late on the 28th, we have the moon move into Aries and it's going to be kicking off. It gets hot, hot, hot. Like I've been saying, put away your matches, put away your incendiary devices. Just put everything away, folks, because it's, it's not going to need much to spark a fire. Uh, we've got an increase in accidents on freeways, bridges, um, et cetera, due to high speed, natural disaster of significance, potentially 928 through 929. This could be anywhere in the world. Um, and it could be due to weather, volcanic action, or a potential seismic activity. Border conflicts escalate, big accidents and travel delays. If you're driving, on the 29th during the full moon be very very careful in the morning even though the full moon kicks off at like east coast 529 that's like some people are just getting on the road then or on the train um take it easy people are going to be really cranky we could see some big public violence or riots or looting and this is global that we could see a mass shooting in the united states um we could even see a bomb you know, especially on the, the 29th, um, there could be globally explosions, bombs and acts of terrorism, seismic activity all over, all over the world. 5.5 likely we could see Alaska, Southeast Asia, Central and South, South America and Central Asia and the Caribbean are the hot spots for me, but I would maybe add, um, Greenland or Iceland, <clears throat> probably Iceland. Sorry. Um, would add that so we could see attempted coups insurrections and political violence arson or wildfires could move out of control we could see extreme violence weather political upheaval or all of it on september 29th with this full moon we could see attempted coups insurrection and political violence globally um infrastructure damage uh collapsed buildings bridges freeways and that would be september 30th september 30th that would be as the moon was beginning to square off um <laughs> with pluto that's that's going to be intense because the minute that moon hits the north node, it's of historic significance and it is square Pluto. So that's probably no. We might have an eleventh hour save on on keeping the government open. Um, there's a lot of rhetoric in the news happening right now saying that big companies are preparing for a shutdown. If I were you, I would make sure I went to the grocery store, um, do your best, do your cell shopping. Um, if, if the government shutdown is going to impact you economically, um, kind of be mentally prepared for that to be a potential. So if you can get the things you need to get ahead of that, I know it's the end of the month. Um, do your best. I, I again I see that there's some kind of backdoor deal as a potential. I certainly see Kevin McCarthy under strain and stress. He is in a set of return year. Um, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. It's just gonna be interesting because the GOP is in such disarray um, that it's really not helping anything in this country. So um, we shall see what happens. I, I warned you guys back in 2021 that uh, 2022 and 20, early 2023, we would see the eighth Saturn return of the United States. And that would be all about a constitutional crisis when I read that return chart. And that's pretty much what we're in. So it's interesting times, my friends. Alrighty, with that happy news, um, 
remember my order if you're going through the Starbs. That's right. I want a Trenta Vanilla Sweet Cream Cold Brew because that makes my day. Um, I'm also going to do the littles here in a second. I'm loving the feedback from the grown-ups that the grown-ups are liking the little segment. And that's good. I hope it's encouraging to everybody because I don't think we change that much from childhood. You know, we get experience, you know, we have perspective that we don't have. Uh, We have other ways of interpreting the world, but I don't buy it for a second that we have to lose our innocence regardless of anything. You know, they, they, people used to tell me you lost your innocence when all that stuff happened to you. And I was like, You know, I really didn't. Not really. I mean, I believed them for a while and I got jaded. I got pretty jaded. And then one day I just, I was listening. um, I was listening to Sarah, I think it was Sarah McLaughlin. And she was just belting out, we are born innocent. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Why do I have to let what happened to me make me jaded? Doesn't that make them win? Isn't that as good as, you know, being hurt, you know, and and debilitated and proving they were stronger or whatever? No, I'm not going to do that. So I started becoming more playful, more childlike, getting that part of me that honestly, I, I didn't play a whole lot as a kid. I read a lot of books. Um, I lived adventures in my head, but I let myself start living adventures and that was really cool. And then I realized innocence was never anything for anyone to take. I had just tucked it away for safekeeping and so have you. So enjoy next segment up is for the littles. As promised on round two of interviewing Casey Felton Louie, because uh, <laughs> there was a strike agreement, uh, or not a strike <laughs> agreement, a contract. Um, it's late and we're re recording. Hi, Casey. Hi. <laughs> it's good to have Again. you back. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy Again. to be back. This is a good reason to come back. Right, right. And you know, I said it this morning. I was like, I knew I was going to have to re- record because you know what I forgot to look at? The moon was it the moon? sliding into Aquarius. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know what's funny is that as soon as you said that, I was like, she's the one who taught us how important it is to look at the moon. And she is so right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I missed it. I was just looking at that moon conjunct Pluto. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't thinking about the sun in Libra now. Mm-hmm. And until yes. this morning, and I looked at the chart and I went, Oh, that's, yeah, I bet they come out with a, at least a tentative agreement, which it appears they did. Yeah. Which I learned from you because you are a union member. So let's talk about who we need to listen to when it comes to the 411. Yeah, I actually had just posted a video on TikTok today about the importance of just getting your information right from the source, especially in a media landscape where there are all of these companies that own all these subsidiaries, and especially in media, the companies that control things are so few now that Mm -hmm. there are connections between the studios that we're negotiating with and the media that is, you know, most of us are consuming in the mainstream. So We have to be really careful where we get our information from. So my advice for our strike or any strike is always to always, always, always refer directly to the unions because all of those media outlets are tools that can be used when necessary. They're used all the time. And I think it's media literacy is so important Mm -hmm. as we go forward. It's, It's so important now, but especially as we go forward, I feel like, you know, we're dealing with a lot of change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you're going to be dealing with some good change. What are yeah. you, what are you most hopeful for? 
You know, I've been on strike for a while now, since May. So mm. I'm looking forward to getting back to work and doing the thing that I love doing. I love being in a writer's room. I love collaborating with other writers. I love the process of, you know, the inception of an idea to actually seeing it on TV. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing to do. And, uh, I really like, I really just, I want to, I want the option to get back to it. Right. Like the option to mm -hmm. go back to work. Um, Bye. I, yeah, I'm so thankful that the strike, you know, has happened and been so successful and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the terms of the deal are. According to mm -hmm. our union, they said that they made significant gains. We we don't have those deal points yet. So that's really important mm -hmm. to know is that we don't have those deal points. So it's mm -hmm. a tentative agreement. Right now, they're going to need to hammer out all of the contractual language. And that can be a whole back and forth. I don't know off the top of my head like how long something like that might take. But after that process, we... Uh, are going to have to vote on it as a union before it's approved. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's pretty significant. They are not asking us to pick it this week uh, unless we're going in support of SAG. SAG is still very much on strike. The actors are still very mm -hmm. much on strike. They have their own negotiation process that has to happen successfully, and we are going to be there to support them for sure. So mm -hmm. there's that. But, you know, there's a moment here where there seems to be some impending resolution. So, you know, I'm just allowing myself to enjoy that and, you know, be open to the possibility that it, it may actually be over. So. Right. Right. I wonder if you won't see maybe things more outlined by the full moon on Thursday. Because I think everybody is eager to get it yeah, yeah. resolved as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. for sure so yeah. um, you know they did negotiate through the weekend which you know i think gave everybody the idea that yes it's serious so you know hopefully it mm -hmm. continues to be a smooth ending to a uh, months long very frustrating back and forth <laughs> right i bet you've been on that picket line from the beginning and consistently so except for when i stole you away <laughs> took you on a road trip yeah. um <laughs> so let's say the strike ends and you, there's a contract in place or at least an agreement contract people can get hired go back to writing rooms and you get a spot in a writing room um how do you think you're going to bring astrology back into the mix that's a great question. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's a great question. You know, um, well, I mean, one thing that I'm kind of actually bummed about is that I'm probably not going to have as much time to read charts as I do now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will, I will have to adjust to that, to having more limited availability because being in a writer's room is very demanding at times, mm -hmm. depending on the schedule and, uh, Af right after a strike could be a very busy time for a lot of rooms because the demand is going to be, you know, there, there's time has been has been missed here in the industry, and so I'm I'm assuming that there's mm -hmm. going to be a push to create get, media you know, quickly. Get all hands. Yeah. So all yeah, hands yeah. So I, you know, I'm going to have to change my schedule. It's going to be different. I still want to continue reading because I really love that. I learned so mm -hmm. much from it, and I get such joy out of meeting clients that are looking to understand themselves better and, you know, make more sense of their lives and take more ownership of their lives. Mm -hmm. I, to be a part of that is to me like such an honor. And I really am grateful that people trust me with that because I take, I take this very seriously and I take it, you know, as a, I guess like a vocation. I've never really had something like that. So mm -hmm. um, it is really meaningful me to me to work with people in that way. Um, so I think, you know, I, I'll continue to do that. Um, I I haven't been in a room as the, at the same time as being an astrologer. So it'll be interesting to like introduce myself. I'm that, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, how soon it comes up. And it, it's going to depend on a lot of different circumstances. So that might be interesting. But 
as you're like asking one of the writers so when was the character born what's their birthday what's the backstory <laughs> do you know what time they were born yeah like, what? i'll be bringing up birthdays very early on <laughs> in the process i just i'm just like really into birthdays um right like really specific though like really like what time yeah i don't know um but I mean, you know, it's it's just such a part of my day to day life. I'm, you know, depending on what project I'm working on, maybe it's something that can be incorporated in in some type of way. But you know, I'll you know I'll see what where I land. Right. I hope you land on a metaphysical drama, and you actually <laughs> write good metaphysical stuff into a show instead of the crap we usually see. As, as an energy worker and, and astrologer, I, I've been very disappointed by many shows yeah. and then thrilled by others. Like Doctor Who has some yeah. real strong stuff in there. That's cool. Not necessarily the galactic issues, but a lot of the principles are very solid. Yeah. Saying. Yeah, I would love to find ways to incorporate it. I My very first script that I ever wrote for television was uh, just like a, a spec pilot. It's not something that has actually been made, but that's pretty mm-hmm. much how you get work in this industry is at some point like you're going to have to write some original material and people read it and then, you know, they hire you or they don't. And the first thing that got me hired was a script about a assistant pastor who has basically metaphysical experiences, experiences mm-hmm. that he can't explain in the wake of his, senior pastor going missing and he's kind of trying to figure out what has happened to him and also assuming power over this you know evangelical church that he suddenly you know it's like being the vice president right it's like suddenly you're called up to do something and it's like wait a minute i've been you know Mm -hmm. oftentimes they've just been in the background and like that's not their Mm -hmm. job and so it's that kind of a kind of a story but everything that happens it is a I would say it's kind of like grounded science fiction, but, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I wrote this many years before I had any involvement or knowledge or education in anything metaphysical, really. So yeah, but you psychic AF with that Mars and Gemini (laughs) and the 12th house girl. Yeah. You're a secret serial killer. It's one or the other, or maybe both. (laughs) I want to announce that on the podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Can neither be confirmed nor denied. Um, So that's cool. I'm excited for you. Um, so you guys can book with Casey and we, we talk about that at the end as well, because you're getting two separate recordings. Cause the first <laughs> part of this was making fun of the studios. So we had to <laughs> cut that out because there's been a tentative agreement. That's what I get for being organized. <sighs> I didn't want to have to edit. I was going to do this in one shot. But oh well. Best laid plans. This is what happens when you have a Pisces North Node. You don't get to plan. And it drives you crazy. All of you with Virgo South Nodes, you know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Uh, So, um... People can still book with you, though? Are you you going to... Absolutely. Yeah, I am still going to be available. This is not going to be resolved immediately. So I'm still Mm -hmm. very much reading and will continue to be reading. So, you know, it'll happen when it happens. My calendar, I'm going to keep my calendar up to date. So it's, you know, whenever Mm -hmm. you are hearing this, go to the calendar. It will be all good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I will adjust as necessary and we'll go from there. We'll make it work. And you you can check out Casey's readings and the calendar by clicking on the link in the podcast description. As can you look up Jen or Mackenzie or mine. Yes. You got to use the drop down menu though, guys. It's not all the readings are all on one page. All the needle readings are on one page. And that's what Casey, Casey and the gang, I always have to say that. Um, <laughs> Casey and Mackenzie and Jen, that's what they do. So make sure you get booked for spooky season yeah oh my god yeah that's gonna be fun right it is gonna be fun this is my yeah this is this is gonna be good 
this is like you were reading on your own didn't didn't you kick into solo readings like this time last year i believe so i believe so but i do too now it's it's uh you know i i'm amazed at like how much has happened in the past year really so that's spooky in and of itself <laughs> it's like i feel like i'm right. different yeah it's i've i've shifted course so much that it's it's kind of cool right you studied mediumship and tarot and continued yeah. your astrology readings who to thunk it not me i can tell you that i i'm just happy to be here and enjoy my life so i'm i'm all on, i'm here for the ride like i've realized because I continuously find myself in situations where things are happening that I'm like, this is really cool, but I didn't plan for this at all. You know? Mm hmm. She has a cat moon, so that's. <laughs> that's a problem. The mayhem. The, the mayhem. mayhem. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The contrast of energy in my chart. <laughs> What transits do you think are um, really active for you this year that that are kind of funking around with the with the uh, stability or the status quo? Uh, my my stability, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, I mean, Neptune has been in my ninth house for quite a while, so mm -hmm. I feel like this continuing of dissolving of the belief systems, for sure, is is happening. <laughs> right. The oh, rending God. of a veil. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then Pluto doing its thing with my Venus, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I feel that. Mm. Stupid. Yeah, those Pluto transits. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like I'm. Out. Yeah, it feels like I'm restructuring my foundation. Like I've been on this con kind of continuous process of kind of re re-establishing what my relationship is with myself, like how I value myself, how I assess value in my life. Um, big time because we're so trained to devalue things that aren't like exactly what we had planned or what we should have mm -hmm. right and that's very like in line with that Capricorn energy how it can be sometimes it can be very rigid it can be very like this is what I this is what I want this is what I expect this is what I'm comfortable with this is what I deserve and mm -hmm. sometimes you know we can get things in, in roundabout ways so you know, it's about like giving space for, you know, the journey to be what it is or whatever. <laughs> right. Easier said than done sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But you've really come through this time pretty strong. I mean, it's not like you haven't had, you know, your ups and downs through the last year, um, <laughs> but especially the May to September. Um, yeah. You know, just, <laughs> yeah yeah i've had a lot i've had a lot happen this year it's been a mm -hmm. it's been an interesting year yeah but i have a very different relationship with myself than i did a year ago for sure mm. oh hell yeah it's been a joy to witness <laughs> you, you've really really <laughs> settled you. into your own skin in a really powerful way thank so. you yeah yeah i you know it, part of it was i realized i had this real realization through astrology you're weird. You've always been weird. Everyone knows you're weird. You might as well just be yourself because nobody's like, yeah. hey, she's super normal. Very regular. Right. You know, it's like, why am I trying to adjust when nobody's buying it? <laughs> you know? I resonate. I resonate. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And it's just that whole, what is normal anyway? It doesn't really exist. And no. There's, that's there's another quo, but... yeah that's another one of my joys to because I think people often come to readings and you know if they I, I've given so many people their first readings by the way which is always mm -hmm. an honor 
Uh, I always Huge. thank people extra for that because I'm like, you have never done this before. You, you, you don't know, you know, and it's a just, you're in a vulnerable situation. It's new. So I always appreciate that, but I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> the ADHD brain, ADHD brain in action. Right. It's, in, it's like squirrel. But it is really like squirrel. squirrel. That's unfortunate. No, <laughs> no, I, I get it. Yeah. More than you know. Um, as I'm like, I don't know all the things I have to do. That's just a lot. And then I look at my it list. I'm like, lot. okay, just do one of them. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so you have been, um, you do do a lot of first time readings and it is an honor. Yeah, it is. Um, I think, um, you're lucky ducky to have, uh, Mars moving through Libra right now and it's getting close to coming to your Venus and then Venus and, in, in Leo in your second house is kind of nice too. It is. It's great. It's been, it's been great. I good timing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I, I have kind of, I set the tone to, I was like, end of this year is going to be really good for me. That's what I've been saying all year. Like mm-hmm. the end of this year is going to be really good for me. And I've just been, you know, appreciating that. But I do think a lot of people, when they come for their first astrology reading are waiting to hear what's wrong with them. And I oh love God, telling yeah. people that everybody is, that there's nothing wrong with them and that they're, there's very different. They're themselves, but they're not free, you know, standing out to me as a human being in a freakish way, you know, it's just like, right. you know, I like that part is really nice. Like to assure people that, yeah, maybe you feel weird and out of place, but you are no, you know, less human and, and less, there's so many of us who feel like that and are that, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everybody's kind of there's, weird. There's actually. You, everybody is weird. And the normies exactly. are the weirdest. Oh, but, well, yeah. um, Mr. Rogers said it, you know, I like you just the way you are. How you are is just perfectly you. And we're so taught to the contrary, you know. And so it is a privilege to show people what makes them special in and of themselves. And and we can show the challenges and we can show all of that. We're not we're not denying yeah. that. Oh yeah. Um But it, that's why I'm about to roast Russell Brand's chart tomorrow, mm-hmm. Monday. And um it, the the reason I don't roast very often is because people always think I'm talking about their placements, even when I say, "Hey, yeah. I'm not talking about your chart." So I'm gonna be yeah. very specific because he's got the Moon, Mars, and Jupiter in Aries. Hmm. So you know, every this Aries full moon. moon is gonna be like, "Yeah, right." Oh, and it's gonna <laughs> smack him in the full moon. That's why I'm roasting <laughs> because he's Amazing. about to have his moon. Hang- Mm, he's getting moaned. Oh. <laughs> but um but so often people come to us afraid because of the popular yeah. astrology out there where they've dragged signs with no caveat. Mm-hmm. And that's why guys, I'm serious. I'm not being nice when I say I'm talking about that person and how their chart expresses. You could have that you could have been born just the same day as him, have yeah. similar placements, and not be like him you might there might be some yeah. things you, you might have well, a really quick mind you might really love language you might have some things in common but you know if, if you're worried about the moon mars and jupiter conjunction in my ripping it i gave birth to one it is intense energy but it doesn't mean you have to be intolerable or insufferable <laughs> so some people were raised yeah Not even two wolves. people with identical charts that can manifest completely differently so it's so important when you're mm-hmm. speaking about it even though even if we're pointing to something in the chart you have to understand it's a synthesis of a lot of different information it's never just yeah. you know oh you have the same moon sign you know like that's mm-hmm. you know and a real astrologer is not just looking at one thing <sighs> never <laughs> pshaw <laughs> that's hogwash and poppycock even if it looks but, like that, that's not what's happening. No, yeah. Even when I'm pointing to something and talking, there's like 16 other things that are being yeah. synthesized into the statement. It's just yeah. you only have so much time to talk. Exactly. On yeah, I think, and, and I hope people realize reading. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, even in a reading, and we're even limited. In a reading, 
yeah, you know, you've got an hour. So we're going to tell you about you. We're not necessarily going to give you an astrology lesson. Exactly. And you don't need to understand the astrology. That's our job. So yeah. that's really we have astrology classes. Yeah, we're just we doing the translation. Okay. And I think more people, yeah. I think that that's a good way to communicate it to people that aren't very experienced with, mm-hmm. you know, the actual kind of math of it all. Mm-hmm. Understand it as a translation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a translation. And, um, and to those who know enough to be dangerous, it doesn't help you to be thinking through the astrology because you're not getting the most out of the interpretation. That's why we call it chart interpretation for interpreting and translating the language. So sit back and enjoy it, guys. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Treat it like a petty. I love it when an astrologer is reading my chart. Oh, yeah. I just sit great. back and I let them do it. I might be analyzing them. Because I can't shut off my brain. But it doesn't mean I'm judging them. I'm like, oh, they're looking at it that way. Okay, that's a cool way to see it. Because you can't see everything in your chart. I ask people for advice. Oh, yeah. It's hard to see stuff in your own chart. Mm -hmm. You're too biased. You're too biased. Yeah. Um, It's like being a doctor or a lawyer. You You shouldn't practice on your own behalf. Because you don't have the yeah detachment exactly. So, but anywho, well, it's always good to have you on. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so happy that there is a potential resolution. You'll have to find another way to, you know, keep up the cardio. I know, right? Back to the mm-hmm. hot girl walks alone, right? <laughs> so. <Solo. laughs> my solo career but, yeah and and hopefully hopefully we'll hear soon but I'm wondering if you won't get a, at least something in writing around the, the full moon it seems take it. with with yeah it seems with the mercury action in there that it's it's a potential so yeah that would be crying. awesome yeah yeah all right well you and I are going to do patron shout outs and astrology Q&A together next um, all right <laughs> It's almost like deja vu. Uh, guys, by the way, we recorded that um, yesterday. <laughs> so uh, this is just the recap so Casey could talk about cool stuff about herself. And in, we'll have you back. So Always a, pl- a pleasure. All righty. Take care. Mm-hmm. I hope he hears this, though. He probably won't, but I would love Bill Mark to know that I think he's an untalented hack. <laughs> but uh, there we go. I'm just fi- I'm just sassy today, Casey. <laughs> it's Libra season. <laughs> it's Libra season. My Jupiter Uranus conjunction at zero degrees is activated. Mm-hmm. You are lit up, right? <laughs> Libra spirit, activate, activate. <laughs> you think Libra is calm? <laughs> Have you ever seen, if you piss off somebody with a Libra Mars, Libra Moon, Libra, well, Venus in some ways, but um, Mars and the Moon, they go unhinged. Yeah. Ask me how I know. I am <laughs> that person. Um, not as much anymore. I've mellowed with age, but yeah, I've mellowed. <laughs> And people are like, oh, no, <laughs> uh, that's mellow. So let's talk a little bit. Um, actually, let, let's do some patron shout outs. I know we're not getting all the cool jazzy music with this one, um, but I just kind of wanted to record it all in one shot so I didn't have to do editing because I am working on the Call of Gaia's website because it would cost me like 30 grand to have this built for me. Kid you not. It's cool, though. And if you don't know what the Call of Gaia is, it's my esoteric astrology learning tool and beautiful deck of cards with a board, like a board game, where you learn about the different energetical parts of self and your role here on planet Earth. Because we need new stories. Almost every origin story 
that human beings have, not all, but most, especially coming out of the Bronze Age um, era from Chaldea, and that spread into Asia as well as the West. Um, it comes to the fall of man, that being here is a punishment and you, you get to have a better life somewhere else. It's all control. It's all control. And so understanding the privilege of being in the physical, um, even if you've had a hard time, knowing that life isn't perfect. And I would have told me to F off when I was a younger person with that point of view, because I did not feel fortunate being here. I'm sure there's a lot of people who resonate with that. But imagine if you could change your perspective, how much better life could be. And I'm not talking about toxic positivity. So the call of Gaia actually helps you create a really fabulous narrative about yourself and your life experience from a perspective of not positive and negative, evolved and unevolved, but experience. Whether we consider those negative or positive, it's still experience. And that's that's the blessing of this, this ride that we get for an undetermined amount of time. Gorgeous artwork by the artist Karen Duvald. Absolutely stunning. We've got the cards ordered. We got the boards ordered. This has been a journey, Casey. This we couldn't yeah. get them printed in the same place. I've had to order things from one spot and from another. I have to have oh, that's the other thing I gotta do today. I gotta upload the freaking artwork for the mailer boxes. But that means the first hundred decks as a limited edition will get little personalized notes. From <laughs> Libra Moon. I love that. Maybe little spritz of like fragrance or something. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided yet, but I figure if I have to pack the boxes, there's going to be cute things. Yeah. Right. So it's been, it's been a journey <laughs> as they send me a customs form. I'm like, do I need to fill that out? Do I have to be custom studio? No, it's printed material. So I don't, but um, <laughs> I had no idea. I'm, I, this is such a wild experience. Yeah. All right, let me let me let me say hi to our newest patrons. Whoops, dropping my read. Oh, I probably need these reading glasses. Here we go. See where when people see it. See that's why people script. And I'm like, I don't know. I have a Sag Mars. We're just going to be mayhem on my show. Casey, however, I use her services as an editor. She just edited. Um, the Saturn cycle book beyond the Saturn return that I did for the workshop. I taught we'll have that up for purchase on Patreon. Casey talk, talk about that book while I look for the new patrons. Well, I mean, I was really impressed editing it. I was in another class at the same time that the Saturn class was happening. So I didn't get to stay for all mm -hmm. of it. And the Saturn cycle is so interesting. And I think because Saturn is so misunderstood and villainized, by people that maybe don't know enough about astrology. It's very, in pop astrology, I see a lot of Saturn slander. And so mm -hmm. the book is, it's about what, 28 pages? And they're like full of information. I think it's like such a great resource for really understanding what the Saturn cycle is and the themes surrounding it. And it really demystifies it really. It's not scary. It's more about preparation, diligence, planning, aging, time, you know, they're mm -hmm. all these things that, um, you know, are just like everything else, a part of life. And so mm -hmm. I felt like it was, it's such a good resource. I was really impressed with like how much you got into 28 pages. Cause that sounds like not very much, but it was, I, it was just like, your, your writing is so economical that you can get so mm -hmm. much in, in, in a very, accessible very understandable way and i feel like that workbook is really dead on for that i have capricorn on my third house cuss <laughs> i feel you and, and so my virgo third right? house is like mm -hmm. yes yes mm -hmm, i love mm -hmm. not having my time wasted you know by just saying right. it plainly and clearly yeah um, yeah it's good there's a reason for that um mm -hmm. besides the capricorn um, when I was studying astrology and I did have mentors, but when I would get the books and I'd be waiting for that nugget 
And it was like reading an, um, if you've ever studied anthropology or taken it even in a class, the professors are very long winded and so are their books 90% of the time. And people were so self referential. Or the older astrologers, if I saw one more article about Marilyn frickin' Monroe, because they had the hots for her when they were like 13 <laughs> or whatever, you know, it was just, I would read these books and it was ponderous. It was full of information that honestly was not relevant. Like their opinion about this person was not relevant <laughs> to the study. And if I didn't love the study, if I hadn't been absolutely, you know, when I was on a healing journey and astrology was the only thing making sense out of any of it. And if I wasn't dedicated and desperate, and I mean, there was a massive amount of desperation in my learning process because I was holding on the life on threats when I was younger. It was, I had suffered so much trauma, so much. And it was so extreme. Like, when I tell you I made psychologists cry, and these were hardened, seasoned people. These were not like, oh, I just got out of school therapists. These are people who had had hundreds, if not thousands, of people they worked with in their careers. And they were very established, just break down. And that was unhelpful. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> um, not a good so, time. Oh, yeah. And it was the 90s. And yeah. then early 2000s, neuroscience hadn't caught up astrology was it and so yeah. i think it behooves us as teachers and structures of metaphysical studies to step out of our ego and give the information that's going to help people move forward and um i think i finally found the best way to describe myself i've had, had a hard time like how do i describe myself and um the other day when i passionately wrote that free article on patreon if you guys haven't checked that out make sure you do anybody can read that um i describe myself as the astrologer who translates the astrology into actionable steps you know practical application so I economize the language for the benefit of the student. I'm going to make a, um, not only is there the live recording and I've sent this out to the students already, but I'll make a little slideshow presentation that goes with the workbook. And of course the people who've already taken the workshop, don't worry, you get that, but I'll have it up for sale in the Patreon store. Cause we do have a store on Patreon now. Patreon has changed things up. Um, I think it's now visible on the app. But speaking of Patreon, which by the way, thank you, Casey. I don't take those compliments for granted. She has a Capricorn moon. She'll let me know if it sucks. Uh, <laughs> that's why I have her edit my stuff. She doesn't say that. She'll be like, have you considered this language? <laughs> She's careful. But, um, but you know, this, or she'll tell me, this doesn't sound like you. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I appreciate that. That's, that's what I want in an editor. And we can thank Mrs. Nancy Wilson, who was my journalism teacher back at Gladstone High School in Gladstone, Oregon. Nancy Wilson, if you're listening, I have thanked you in everything I've ever published um, out in actually physical books because you taught me that not every word is precious and you taught me <laughs> the economy of language and the power of words and taught me how to write to a column inch. And yeah. that is a skill. And Man, in fact, in college, they made me de-economize my language because mm -hmm. they'd be like, well, it needs to be longer. I'm like, why? I said everything I needed to say. And they'd be like, well, it's got to be this. I'm like, so you just want me to fill it with fluff? Is that it? And That's why like, it well, yeah. yeah. That's why it works mm -hmm. well for me to be a screenwriter because I am so economical with my language. That's kind mm -hmm. of you know that's how screenwriting goes so it was really funny when i right. had that realization about myself i was like oh that's where i belong. right <laughs> right whereas you know a novelist might have you know um scorpio on that third house or pisces or taurus or um maybe libra you know be mm -hmm. a little more poetic with that language gemini could be i, I don't know you know that would be maybe more educational writing i mean it depends on the person and all their other placements don't come at me listeners i'm just postulating yeah yeah okay let's give a thank you to our new patrons we've got Alyssa, brandy Kristen, eodel i think i'm saying your name wrong right if i'm not 
Tell me in Coffee with Lori. Of course, that'll have to be the next one. I hate, see, I'm always, I record this on Sundays usually and it's Saturday. So, uh, Bethany, Jessica, Rosemary, Dallas, Jade, Bay, Michelle, Ellie, Sarah, Irene, Mike, C, Juliana, Marguerite, another Marguerite. There's two of them. That's cool. Uh, you know what? Before I read the rest, I knew a Marguerite when I was a little girl. She owned a cafe at Seal Rock, Oregon, and she made the best pie on the planet. The best. And she was beautiful. She had the darkest black hair and it was in a very stylish beehive. It was the 70s. And she wore the prettiest red lipstick and she flirted with my grandpa, but not inappropriately. (laughs) He did not flirt back. We used to go. He and I used to go. All right. Kristen, another one. And we've got Paula and Christy. Thank you guys. I would love more people to sign up for Patreon. We got more cool stuff coming up. I'll be putting out part two of this podcast to patrons uh, this week. It'll come out uh, Monday afternoon. So if you're listening to this in the morning, you, this afternoon, you'll get your full moon episode where I walk you through the houses and to explain what's going to happen to all of you. <laughs> well, your yeah. fate is. <sighs> yeah. So put your matches away, guys. It doesn't mean it's bad on an individual level. There's a lot of power to this one. And if you're ready to break free, to break out, to let loose, kick up your heels and individuate, this is amazing. It's a great, great uh, full moon. What do I think is going to happen for the government shutdown? When I look at this full moon, I set the chart. Now I did a little ticky tacky. Um, I didn't say a whole lot. You know, I wrote captions. Make sure you always read my captions because it's hard to speak in 60 second sound bites. It is. It's, um, usually takes me like five or six takes. I don't think people realize how much time it takes to make a short little video. Um, But let me see. Oh, you just had one go viral, didn't you? Uh, Viral, I think, would be, you know, maybe a little much. It did did well. Like, I was surprised considering how, what, it was pretty basic video, you know? But you never know what is going to take off. Right. Well, you know, the definition of viral is more than your normal viewers. Mm. So it doesn't have to have like a cap. It's not like, oh, it got 300,000 views and that's viral. If you normally get like a thousand views and you Mm -hmm. get 5,000 views, that's still viral. Yeah. Yeah. It is relative. So So viral for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got to push you up. Got to lift you up, girl. All right. I'm going to look at the chart here. So I set the chart for DC because we are on the eve of of the shutdown. They have to have this figured out by September 30th. The full moon happens on the 29th. Full moons do reveal. But the fact that this full moon is in Aries, this is kind of every man for themselves, every woman for their, this is, this is not, hey, let's hold hands and sing a song together. (laughs) This is the energy. This is, um, there can only be one. This is the Highlander, man. Um, <laughs> as I have Queen playing in my head. Um, <laughs> it, it's the Gen Xers will know, and the kids of Gen Xers will know. Um, but yeah, this is, it's very interesting when I look at this chart because we also have Neptune retrograde in that seventh house. And so not only do I think a deal may not, I, I, I think there's a backdoor deal in the making, but I think we've got a lot of people ratting everybody out. I, it, you know how they squabble? The GOP has just basically turned into the annoying kids you used to have in class who were obnoxious and disruptive and constantly causing problems and then ratting each other out. I don't know if you had to deal with that. I did. I lived in a small town. Um, that's what happens when you drink out of hoses, people. 
what's it saying? Lead poisoning for everybody. But um, we've got Venus squaring off with Uranus. This does not bode well financially. And we're going to see more celebrity scandal. I'll be, I, I bet, I bet to detract away from the fighting in D.C. Because this happens in the early hours of the morning. This is as the day starts in D.C. By the way, the commute's probably going to suck. We might see some real nasty traffic accidents um, on the East Coast. Because this is at the beginning of the commute. This could be on a freeway, a turnpike, a rail, tram, um, it could be real surprising what happens, but I bet we get a celebrity scandal. Most of these celebrity scandals have been distractions from everything else. I know everybody's disgust uh, is like, well, both disgusted and disappointed in Ashton and Mila, but did you really think they were in it? Actually, it's really easy to say you're helping kids. Come on. For those of us who are survivors that killed um, me. I always I take issue at it because I'm like, why don't you go check your neighbor's house? Why mm-hmm. don't you do that? You want to think about these elite rings of people smuggling people? Yeah, that happens absolutely, and it's horrendous. But it, 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 you're looking at the boogeyman instead of Uncle Bob next door, so or Aunt Judy, you know, whoever these people are. And if that's if your name is Bob or Judy, I apologize, but um, I'm just making up names so i'm not sure we get an agreement i'm just not it just does not look like good financial news there might be a resolution to extend i think we might avoid a government shutdown but i i think it's robbing peter to pay paul and i think that kevin mccarthy might have to fall on his own sword So he is in his Saturn return, by the way. That's interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got his chart. Let me look. Let me look. I know I pulled his chart the other day, which is who says Kevin McCarthy. He was born January 26th, 1965 in Bakersfield. So what's fascinating is his Saturn is at three degrees of Pisces. So Saturn, he's he's on the retrograde part of that right now. So he will have the final bit next year because Saturn stations direct in November. So it won't be to three degrees probably until what, January around his solar return maybe or just before. And then he's um, just finished his Jupiter return because Jupiter is not going or no, He'll have his Jupiter return next year because it's a 16 degree Taurus Jupiter in the 12th. So he financially benefits from backroom deals. Isn't that fun? Um, Aries is in his 11th house. It's also in his 12th, but the full moon happens in his natal 11. He may lose some friends or find out who his friends really are. Does he have any? I don't know. Does he deserve them? Probably not. Um, But he may be the least problematic on that side. All 435 seats are up for grabs in, in 2024, folks. I know you're all worried about who's going to be president. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't flip that house, kiss your butt goodbye. The house is essential to hold. So flip it and don't just fall for the vote blue or vote, you know, blue, no matter who. We've had a lot of Democrats change parties because they know vote blue, no matter who. No, vet them, research them, look into them. Um, oh, wait, he has an early Sag moon, though. His moon is at three degrees. So this full moon will be trying his moon. Interesting. I could totally see him having a Sag moon the way he claps off at people. (laughs) 
He might, you know what? I wonder if he loses his coalition, but lawyers his way and maybe saves himself by the hair of his chinny chin chin. I wonder. I wonder. I'm just postulating, guys. This one's hard to predict. Yeah. And I haven't put that much energy into it because I'm honestly more worried about how you make it through. Because this is political theater. The corporations have owned and bought almost everybody in that place. So you have to focus on your local and your state elections. It is essential. Stop over focusing on it. We don't have a king. We never have. Never have. We got rid of those things. President is important. But your House of Representatives is exceedingly important. And so is the Senate. You get, and you got to look at your local stuff, your school boards, your water districts. Water districts are essential, especially with climate change. So, and just wait. You know, we've got Neptune getting ready to move into Aries in 2025, 2026. And there will be fights over water rates, just like there was in the late 1800s. Go look up the sheep and cattle wars that happened in the late 1800s. They don't teach this stuff much anymore. They used to teach it when I was a kid. Um, it's all over water and mineral rates. And so you need to be involved in that. Don't think you can't be. You don't have to be educated on the matters. You can be self-educated on it. You don't have to be um, an important rich person. You can just go bug the hell out of your local officials because you have that right as an American citizen. It is your right to address your government. And we don't just sign petitions. You can make calls. You can sign petitions. But you can also show up at public meetings. And that's vital. It's vital. You may not win the day the first time you go. You might be rejected. You might get kicked out of a meeting. You got to keep going back. If you're not involved, you don't have power. The people who show up make the decisions. That's why when people say, well, my union didn't do anything for me. Did you show up to a damn union meeting? Did you show up for a vote? Did you go down there for a debate? Did you offer your opinion? Or did you just be like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Nobody's going to listen to me anyway. Well, good. You just handed your power to somebody else. This Aries full moon, as wild as it is, offers an excellent chance at individuation. A revealing of self. And if you're handing your agency over to everybody else, well, keep complaining. Alrighty. I think I need to say hi to a little. This one calls me the moon lady. I love that I'm called the moon lady. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what's up with Jupiter and Mars. I love that. I love that. Feeling all jazzy getting called the moon lady. And I got to go look in the podcast episodes channel of the Discord. It's Presley. Presley is two and calls me the Moon Lady. Hi, Presley. How are you today? There's going to be a very pretty full moon that you can see maybe even in the morning in the daytime next week. You'll have to ask your auntie to show it to you. I love that. The moon lady. 
when I was a little girl, I was fascinated by the moon because I was born on the day that the men not only landed on the moon in their spaceship, but came back. Did you know that if you look up the day you were born and you can see all the different things that happened, you know, and don't just look at the bad things that happened, look at the good stuff, because for every bad thing that happens, there's a thousand good things that happen. So you can look up, you can ask grownups to help you look up the good stuff that happened, because that kind of energy is inside of you. We call it the astrological weather. You are made of stardust. And you're made of energy. And so it's really, really important that we tune ourselves to the energy that makes us twinkle like little stars. Right? It's too, too much fun to know how bright we can sparkle. Alrighty. That is my message for the littles. Have you ever looked up the good stuff that's happened for you, Casey? Or not for you, but on the day you were born? Um, I've looked up what happened on that day. And, you know, unfortunately, because of like, you know, the research, it is mostly the stuff that kind of was big news that day, which was a little bit more intense. So look up what good stuff happened on this day. Just add that to your question because that'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was a lot of volatility in July of 69. You know, it <laughs> wasn't just the moon landing. There, there was yeah. a lot of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, and it wasn't always, you know, there was, there was a lot going on. Yeah. And so... Um, but it's it's important because I think when we carry the the negative, like my dad, he was born in between Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And imagine not being told any of the good stuff growing up and you just carry that understanding with you, you know. And for every bad thing, there's a hundred good things. Even One of the if main- we're looking... Go ahead. One of the main things that happened on mine was the release of hostages. So, I mean, that is like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a good thing that comes out of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But that's important. Yeah. But see, that's it. Nothing is all good or all bad. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's usually, it's usually a mixed bag. Absolutely. You know, as Mr. Rogers' mom used to tell him, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. Alrighty, let's see. What else was I gonna do? Oh, we got astrology Q and A. Astrology Q and A. Astrology Q and A. Here's a good one. This is by Bryson, and they asked, um, "How do you think Venus, our ex, and Leo will relate to the 2024-2025 Mars retrograde in Leo and Cancer?" especially with Pluto moving from late Capricorn to early Aquarius. Love the podcast. I hope the Venus Mercury retrograde is treating you well because they asked this back in August. We're almost, we're, we have whittled it down. We have 25 questions, guys. That's it from like a (laughs) hundred. That's a lot of questions. So that's a really good question. Um, You're not wrong to think it relates because energy rings out like a bell and the the (laughs) Mars retrograde in 2024 happens at the very end of the year. It happens at the end of December. Um, I think it has more to do with climate change. I do. I think it has a lot to do with climate change. Um, I think we'll see Antarctic ice and Arctic ice melt fairly rapidly and it it does swing (laughs) does swing it back into Mars into Cancer because it's very early degrees of Leo Um, so I don't think it it resonates I think we might see some celebrity scandal again Um, but (laughs) politically it's kind of big pretty much so yeah um 
Yeah, so Mars will be in opposition to Pluto in December. <clears throat> because Pluto will re-enter Aquarius at the end of November. So, yeah, it's a lot. We'll be talking about that um, in the November year ahead that I do for 2024. <laughs> you'll notice I haven't called a candidate for the election and there's a reason for that um, I believe the imp incumbent party wins I don't think the opposition party wins but as far as candidacy I'm not I'm not sure if Joe makes it so he might he might live through the uh, inauguration. He might live. I've talked a little bit about this with patrons. Um, but I don't think people should freak out because we have rules for succession in this country. If there's not a power vacuum if the president kills over. You know, and I think people have been over indoctrinated with JFK. You know, people are like, oh no. You know, and it was kind of like Lyndon B. Johnson became president. There was no power vacuum. It was a tragedy for JFK's family. And it was a tragedy for people in America because it was the first thing, first time a presidential assassination had ever been on TV. McKinley wasn't shown, you know, because it was the 1800s. Um, but as far as the mechanics of our country, it doesn't impact it. He has. A, you do vote for the vice president. I heard a, a middle-aged white guy who I enjoy. I'm not going to give his name, but I enjoy his content half the time. And he was like, well, if she becomes president, you guys wishing that she wasn't even elected? Yeah, she was. Okay. I, I know this dude's a lawyer, but uh, he's not a political analyst. And here's how the system works. When you vote for a vice president or a president, vice president ticket, you're voting for both of them. Both of them. Uh, so yeah, Kamala was voted for and she, whether you like her policies, don't like her policies, she's just as qualified as any male candidate has ever been or not been and has the same opportunity to make bad decisions as a president, as every other president who has ever been elected. So, um, she, she is more than qualified for the position. I find the fact that she is both female and, um, uh, a person of color. That is why people are rejecting her. Um, because even a lot of the attacks about her policies, when you further investigate them, were actually kind of some hatchet jobs by her own party. Not all of it, but quite a bit of important hatchet jobs. And the Democrats are very good at eating their own. And the press is already trashing her. So I'd like you to keep that in mind. I think she'd honestly do a fair enough job. I want that house secured because the speaker of the house is then in line after the president of the Senate or the Senate president pro tem. And that would be weirdly enough. I just found that out. Um, Patty Murray from Washington state. Who's not horrendous. She's not as bad as Maria Cantwell. Um, Patty Murray is at least better, you know, but she's still a corporate shill. Um, I lived in Washington for a long time. I know she's beloved because she was a mom in tennis shoes, but come on, guys. Are you still falling for that? Um, but, but she's she's better than some other ones. I'm not going to lie. She, she has some principles. But you need to you need to flip that house. So that's that's what I think about that situation. Um, I know that was a really long ramble from that question, but that question actually is some really complex astrology. <laughs> um, let me get to another question, and we'll get Casey in on the act. Let me see here. Some of these I say for the patron only podcast. I've got a couple. Let's see. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, this is a really good question from Alexandra. And this is 
Um, so I want to know if Saturn is in Aquarius and Uranus is in Capricorn, are the planets in mutual reception, even though Aquarius is in its traditional domicile? I hope I worded that correctly. Thanks, Lori. You did word that correctly. So congratulations, Alexandra. You got the nomenclature right. And I'm not being, you know, pandering to that. I am impressed. Thank you. Uh, the answer is yes. They are in mutual reception on modern rules. And they aren't in traditional rules. Uh, it's both. It's both. They talk to each other. They speak each other's language. Let's put it that way. Because in the traditional anyway, Uranus isn't there. Uranus does not exist in traditional. You don't use Uranus traditionally. Traditional goes up to Saturn. Anybody claiming to be a Hellenist astrologer using asteroids and outer planets is full of shit and doesn't know what they're talking about. And I'm just going to be a plain speaker about that. You can't you can't mix and match stuff and say you're an expert. You got it. You got to be able to come at it with with some actual <laughs> academic knowledge. So, yes, they are in mutual reception because Uranus wouldn't be there otherwise. What's your take, Casey? I mean, you didn't even need me for that one. <laughs> I know, but it was just like I had I had to. Yeah, bash I mean, it's there. yeah. I agree that you know if you're it quote-unquote traditional astrologer and you're using non-traditional planets that's a little bit weird don't you think yeah <laughs> to if say the could, least if if they could see my face <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm grinning because i want to cause mischief but i'm holding back mm. i'm holding back i'm holding back from saying further disparaging comments i'm being good casey it's so funny too because we get on these rants and the things that bug us about kind of less uh, educated versions of astrology a little bit more mix and match and I think that Mm -hmm. people that aren't astrologers are like what are you like on about (laughs) right exactly I know we probably come off really really bitchy to people who don't have the it's like you're like yes but they're desecrating astrology and people they are, like, oh, are. It's not that big a deal and it's like it is a big deal it um, is a big one of the deal. Reasons, yeah it's a huge deal because it, it muddies the waters you know and it makes um, more work for us to teach what yeah. we want to share because we're yeah. i think a lot of the time that we have to kind of undo a lot of this other stuff that is kind of in that muddy water and we're like no we Mm -hmm. can clear all this muck before we can even kind of say what we have to say because there's so much misconception and misinformation it's why i it's why i just block other astrologers it's why i just block other astrologers um not all if somebody's pretty good or decent i don't block them but i saw this woman the other day I kid you not going off about October 4th and um, she was like, Oh my God, this day, this day is the wildest chart I've ever seen. And I'm like, have you not looked at 2020 charts? Have you not looked at 2025? Have you not looked at 2030? Are you kidding me? October 4th of 2023 is by far not the weirdest chart I've ever seen. So anyway, um, (laughs) pardon me, pardon me. It's so good you're here because I would be worse if you were not. (laughs) But let's look up October 4th, shall we, Casey? Yeah. The day of the national emergency alert system on our cell phones that has conspiracy theorists all over the country telling you your brain's gonna get mushed by frequencies these people like you can't make this stuff up it's probably the rapture also (laughs) oh god would the rapture actually happen and get rid of these (laughs) please i would love that leave us alone That's what, exactly yeah. what I said when I my mom told me about the the latest rapture date, and I was like, "Great, have a good trip." Yeah. Bye bye, bye bye now. 
bye bye say hi to jesus for us <laughs> so um <sighs> what what is it about it's at this 220 2:22 p.m. which i'm like okay who in the government thought that was funny yeah you know somebody did that just to be a dick they're like, hey, let's screw with the conspiracy theorists because they're going to be conspiring anyway. Why don't we just make this super fun? <laughs> you know somebody picked 222. I think it's actually at 2 p.m. I don't think it's actually at 222. Let me look at the real date. Now, by the way, uh, TV all over the country used to do this as a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting service. Hmm. At the same time, all over the place. This is not a new concept. It's actually past time that they had one for cell phones. We have Amber Alerts. We have other things. But having emergency alerts nationwide is a good idea. All right. Let me look up the time, Casey. Let's see. Oh, geez. But talk about the chart while I do this. Talk to, talk to the guests. <laughs> They're like, I don't know you. You're not my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the babysitter that's been left in charge. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I don't know. The moon is is trying Mars. Is that supposed to be like sexy? Um, you know, I mean, the moon is making some interesting aspects. I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing off the top of my head like what the big deal oh. is. It's at 2.20 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Uh. So it's not. So first of all, it's 2.20 p.m. Eastern, Uh which is 11.20 a.m. Pacific. So it's not it, it. People, you have to get time zones. It's not the same time everywhere all at the same time. That was my problem with the rapture. They're like, it starts at 12 a.m. Where? (laughs) Oh, facts. (laughs) Facts and details. (laughs) Just so crazy. (laughs) But yeah, so 2.20 p.m., 11.20 a.m. Pacific. Oh, I've got it. Do I have it still set for the East Coast? I do. I'll just put it to that. So 2.20... I st- so first of all, BIMBO, which is not her username, was like 222. No, it's 220. It's 220. That's funny. Let's not. People just you say know, shit online. I mean, that's the thing mm-hmm. is that you really, especially with astrology, because because astrology is a subject that a lot of people think they know a lot about. And a lot, there aren't enough people that have a level of expertise to be like, hey, this is bullshit. That. There are so many people that I, I mean, I actually, I was talking to you today. I saw somebody, I, I saw a quote unquote astrologer talking about their Chiron and cancer, which I also have because we were, we're probably close in age. Um, and we're talking about how they, they were like crying and they were like talking about how having um, your Chiron and cancer is so difficult because it's, you know, your earliest caretakers Damn. and it was it was, it was a talking. lot I'll give you a sound <laughs> it was just uh, for people that don't know Chiron I mean it just really set a bad tone and it's like well I'm having a day where I'm dealing with my Chiron issues I'm like that's not how it fucking works <laughs> no not at all and that's why we taught the little Chiron workshop um, yeah, in Planet of the Month Club mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's it's egregious yeah. so and you see people doing things like mm-hmm. that and I'm like you know it doesn't help people people to get what they can get out of astrology to see somebody who is claiming to be an astrologer sitting in their car crying about their chiron issues like that's just not a thing you just who who doesn't have family issues yeah it's like Mm -hmm. really how many of us Mm -hmm. raise your hand if you have some issues with your family i would say most of us do some of our most complicated relationships in life are the people that we you know grow up around you know i have met no one without some form of trauma Exactly. Because so I'm like, you know, there's not one person who hasn't been traumatized in some way, shape, or other. And trying to play comparative trauma is a bullshit move. Yeah. Children, children, if you're listening, do not use the words I'm using. Don't, well, and don't also do just it. to to rel- to, uh, I don't know. Just I'm watching somebody kind of bathe in their in their own pain and making it astrological, and as if that's like part of what we do in astrology. And it's just it's it was, it's make it fit astrology, and it's self indulgent. It was very self indulgent. If you're yeah, if you're claiming to be an astrologer, 
we have always been the council to kings. We have always been the councils to the the wealthy. That's who could afford us. That was also whose birth times were being recorded, their birth days. If you were poor, your birthday wasn't even recorded. There's people who live in developing nations to this day who do not know what day they were born because guess what? It's not important either culturally or they don't own anything. And so having it recorded makes no legal sense. Okay. Um, That's just, and this goes way back. This goes back pre-Western Europe domination. Okay. This goes back to Mesopotamia. That's one of my professors used to call it. Um, Yeah. There's a lot of self-indulgence and and we have to step back from our own personal issues and stop trying to make crap fit. Mm -hmm. There's verifiable astrological process. And so if people think we're being mean when we're correcting other people's bad astrology, and it's very funny because the young people who had no exposure to the real deal, all they've had is this social media crap. Yeah. And and again, I'm I'm not a content creator who talks about astrology. I'm an astrologer who tries to make social media content, mm-hmm. sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Um and there is a difference. And yes, we gatekeep certain information. There's a reason because it can be misused. Gatekeeping like that. is sometimes a good thing. Like that with Chiron, I was like, you know, that's not even something that's like gate kept. That is just that's already out there, and people are doing this kind of thing with it. You know, it's. I it, blame. I blame. I blame some of the books from the nineties on that. I really do. Yeah, they sensationalized it, and you have to remember if a major publishing house or a publishing house chooses a book, they don't choose it based off merit. They choose it off marketability. Mm-hmm. Always, I don't care when. So just understand that that all traditional publishing is based off marketability. Yeah. Think about that. And that's the other thing is that, you know, in terms of publishing, right? Like, again, astrology is so specialized that I would imagine that a lot of like editor editors and publishers, you know, they don't, they're not, they're checking the, you know, the validity of what's being published, you know? So just because something is in a book doesn't mean that it's accurate. (laughs) Yeah, some of the publishers from back in the day, um, like when Chiron was really being written about in the 90s and stuff, these were through astrological or metaphysical publishing houses. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of upon the buttocks <laughs> of people. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, especially with the Pluto in Leo crowd, having kind of been running the show they did not take constructive debate very well mm-hmm. ask me how I know <laughs> um, some do like Robert Hand is wonderful he'll have a wonderful and rousing academic debate a proper debate not an argument but a debate but a lot of these people were ego head cases and so uh, not uh, Alan Oaken, not really. I mean, he was pretty good about. I I never debated him. You know, I asked him questions. And he answered, but um, his stuff isn't that inflammatory, to be honest. He's he's pretty academic in it. But there mm-hmm. were some, there were some who had very thin skins, and especially when it came to the Chiron work, there was there was this acting like they were an expert on the matter. When it honestly had only been in our consciousness about 20 years, it, we hadn't had enough time to ob- observe. And when some young astrologers would bring that up, um, I was grinning, by the way, audience, <laughs> indicating that was me, the young astrologer. Um, <laughs> we were lambasted for, you know, how dare we, you know, question our elders instead of like, I just wanted to have a conversation about it, you know? So that's kind of why we have the dilution that we have is there was a whole lot of ego raging um, from the Pluto and Leo folk, um, the need to be an expert and not all because I studied under some damn good ones. Um, But that would be why that was horrible. 
<laughs> stupid. Yeah. That, that person. I, I'm glad I did not see that video because if I see it, I don't know that I can hold myself back today. Yeah. I just went ahead and blocked because I was like, that was good. Uh-uh. That was no. Good. no, 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 no. Right? Okay, so this question, oh, this is cute, from Alexandra again. <laughs> Alexandra, you're asking great questions. Um, I heard you say something about Libra moons running in your maternal line and even down to your daughter. So cool. I noticed that my mother has the moon phase before mine. My natal moon phase is new. And my daughter has the moon phase after mine. Is there significant here? What's it mean? Thank you always. Wow, that's really interesting. I know moon phases have been up on deck. I I'm not going to be able to answer that fully because I don't put a ton of emphasis on the phase of the moon. Um, But that doesn't mean it isn't important. Okay. Some people just dive a little deeper there than I do. And you'd be like, but wait, Laura, you're a Cancerian. Yeah. And I'm focusing on other stuff. Um, But that is fascinating. Because when I think about it, (sighs) Let me look at my mom's chart. What are your thoughts on it, Casey? There's no wrong answer here, by the way. Yeah. Um, not not it, in my mind. I think it's exploratory. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's not something that I really look at when I'm reading a chart. I've looked at the moon phase that I was born during, but I honestly, I haven't really explored it that much. But it is it is a very interesting thing to to look at. Mm-hmm. What yeah. do you know? It, what moon phase were you born under? last quarter nice because I'm a square right yes mm-hmm. let's see I'm a waxing crescent yes. baby oh, there you go let's see what is mom's I'm trying to see if mom's is tra- mom's is trying She would be in the um, to go look. I'm not looking on my like fancy software, so I can't just I have to calculate this. But it's interesting. So my mom's is before mine. And I think mine is before my daughter's. But my mom's also in an earlier degree because she's a three degree Gemini and a four degree Libra moon. Mm -hmm. And I'm a 21 degree Libra moon, which squares with my son. And my daughter is uh ooh, waxing gibbous Come on, let me look I have to look fascinating and I don't know I don't know exactly what my grandmother's was I'd have to like recalculate it because we don't know what time she was born so we don't really know I mean we'd have a good idea of where that Libra moon was I just know that the moon was firmly in Libra for my grandmother so but we don't have a birth time I have a date in her place but not the time um but let's see let me see Yeah, Sarah would be a waxing crescent. Nice. Me too. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Wow. Very fascinating. Fascinating. But yeah, um, I don't think it works like clockwork. I don't. Um, in all cases. You know, because again, my daughter and I have almost the same degree. It's like a like fifty minutes off. So she was my lunar return baby. Um, 
I, I don't know that it would it would be interesting to look at if you do have patterns and if there is a strong family pattern that's being addressed there, there may be something to that but I'd be really really careful with making things prescriptive and you have to be really careful with family patterns and talking about them and I can tell you why like I look and sound like my grandmother who was she died really young she was 36 my mom was eight when she passed I grew up hearing Oh, you're just like your grandmother. But nobody said a lot of nice things about her. My mom didn't, did. I mean, my mom's few memories, her mother was like queen, you know. But um, other people would always just bring up, oh, you're feisty like your grandmother. Or you're really ornery like your grandmother. Um, she's a bit of a spitfire. Bit of a spitfire. And looking at her pictures, probably also a Scorpio rising, I would bet. Um and of course, if she, with a Libra moon, would have been all for justice. But the it was terrifying when I got to be about thirty six because I had been so compared to my grandmother that I wasn't sure if I was going to live to forty. You know, so when you lay the family pattern down and you talk about that narrative in front of kids or um, even your adult children, you have to be, remember we our life is built of story. So I wouldn't lay the pattern, and, and and I'm afraid I did a little bit of that when I was raising my kids. I I, I think I overemphasized breaking the family patterns in front of them. Um, I don't think that helped my kids. You know, to be completely transparent. I mean, it, it's, I don't think it's wrong for us to look back and be a little self critical sometimes. I'm not beating myself up. I could only do what I could do. But I don't know that it helps our young people build forward when we're constantly reminding them of the shackles. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Casey? Yeah, I think it can be easy to get lost in like the concept of family patterns, you know, and like that we're just kind of doomed to repeat the things that our family, mm-hmm. you know, has a history of. And I feel like we're just in a time period where we have so much more access to information and resources and, you know, hopefully support that we don't really have to be so beholden to those family patterns and obviously like we we're you say all the time we're never gonna we're never gonna fix it all completely in our lifetime and no you know in that sense like yeah. it's not all on our shoulders but you know over over Which associating trip. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but it's so easy to yeah. over associate with you know just our family in general to identify with them and and good reasons and bad reasons. Right. And yet we are all Mm -hmm. individuals and we have, you know, varying levels of autonomy. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are, you know, searching for a greater sense of autonomy. So I try not to put too much stock in them. Obviously family patterns are a thing, but you know, Mm -hmm. I don't, I try try not to weigh them too heavily. I try to be pretty light about things and you know, but I'm, I'm the I'm the black sheep, so there's that. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I feel that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do one more question. Um, I'm gonna save that one f- for Patreon. Hang on, let me. When Casey and I can discuss. Um, let's see. Okay, let me. Oh my god, they're almost similar. It's really funny. I'm trying to get through here. Okay, um, Emily's asking. I read a piece recently in the New York Times about somebody trying to hack their solar return by traveling to another place for their solar return recommended by an astrologer. What are your thoughts on this? Casey, what have I taught you about this? Do you remember? I mean, I know it's a thing. I don't I don't remember off the top of my head all we've discussed. Yeah, if you can, do it. That's that's what yeah, I remember. Absolutely. I didn't want to blow up your spot. Any return. Right. No, no, you blow it up because you show my yeah. work because you are you are the product of my yeah. labor. 
This is yeah. I mean, you can do that. You can do that. Absolutely, any return. Yeah. Any return. If you have a sucky return and you have the ability to travel somewhere better for it, absolutely, absolutely. But I am going to caution. Don't try it if you don't have a lot of information. If you just read a blog post or you went to mm-hmm. AstroSeek or you went on to, yeah. there's a website you can look up, you know, what does it mean? Those are incomplete answers. You have a yeah. very individualized answer. So if you don't really know what you're doing, have fun with it. If you're going to mm-hmm. have the hubris to jump, you know, um, I will tell a client if I think they need to be elsewhere. Yeah. And I think that the average person looking at a return is not going to be able to sit and determine what's, you know, beneficial and worth getting out of town for necessarily. I think most people, when they come to astrology early on, there's certain houses that are scary or, you know, whatever they, they're attributing it to. And, you know, this is a malefic aspect. Yeah, I, that was my first thought. As well. I was like thinking, I'm just imagining people going and be like, eighth house return, I'm going to go to Bora Bora to get away. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I don't think that that's a good idea because I think that the average person is not going to be able to make that determination. No. Which is why. And they also wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't know what, it's not just the house placement. There's a whole lot exactly. to it. But yeah, yeah. that's what I see. I see. Return. Yeah, I see people watering it down and freaking themselves out with as they do with many mm-hmm. things. So don't do that. Well, that's because they also <laughs> believe the planets are making things happen. Yeah, it's which so... is an extension of deity worship, where there's a sky daddy or, or an earth mummy directing mm. traffic instead of you using your actual freaking brain that you were granted. That's what I think you about have more Hellenistic. agency. Yeah, Hellenistic astrology has always kind of struck me that way because I do feel like people that uh, only kind of know, oh, well, there's, you know, this mythology that's associated with this planet. Like, I feel like that kind of conjures that that energy of like, we are just little peons here on Earth and the gods are playing around with us. And I mean, that's kind of it's it's the same thing. You're doing the same thing with planets instead of, you know, Zeus. Yeah. Yeah. And why would you want to listen to petty mythology? Yeah, that's what I don't get. I didn't get it even as a young person. I was like, that's petty. It is. If that thing is more powerful than me, why is it pettier? Yeah. And I, and I why am just... I not supposed to be petty if it gets to be petty? How fair mm-hmm. is that? So I, I there's a bunch of BS. And I think it, it dec- discredits... It, dis- it discredits the entire field of astrology and it even comes out of some like mainstream like academic astrological work because people haven't questioned their freaking belief systems and mm-hmm. haven't deconstructed they haven't taken the time and I granted not everybody's stuck on an island for 16 years and has nothing else to do with their life um, but you know hey privileged me um, yeah. but you've got to stop looking at now the sun and moon can be causal but more from a physics perspective you know it might be harder to manage your consciousness during a crunchier lunar transit just because you're learning mastery mastery doesn't mean you're perfect at it it means you're learning Um, but it, it discredits the entire system of astrology when people are either making it fit or leaning into the you know this thing is so much bigger than me i have no agency you know it's 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 basically submission kink Mm -hmm. it is and 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 to freak freak yourself out and it's just funny to me Mm -hmm. because the reason that i I came to astrology was because it felt like liberation from that once i understood what was actually going on and so that's why it's so frustrating to see people do that because they're doing they're using the tool in in the opposite way that I would advise mm-hmm. to use it. And in fact, if that's kind of where you're at and you're not able to kind of get out of the negativity with it or the, you know, the universe is punishing me or the gods are punishing me kind of mentality, I would honestly say just leave the astrology alone. If that's if that's yeah. really what you're, you want to do with it, I would say maybe it's not for you. Yeah, step away. Step away from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it, it can be so damaging. 
yes emotionally and and psychologically to look at things in that way mm-hmm. um and i'm working on it i'm working on getting better stuff out there yeah that's i mean and that's yeah. why i think i feel so strongly about what we are trying to do and what you are trying to do with your mm-hmm. platform is mm-hmm. you know use it for what it can be used for and help people kind use of find the their own agency exactly mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and why I trained you guys while well, be doing, you know, y- you guys are exemplary examples of my work. You know, <laughs> I get so many compliments from your clients. Um, I'll get beautiful messages. I try to share them with you guys, as you know, mm-hmm. um, because I think you guys need that bolster because it can be hard when you're trying to do something and then there's all this noise out there in the world. Like there, I guess there's this guy who calls himself an alchemical astrologer and I keep getting asked about him and he's <laughs> like, I've created this new form of astrology. It's alchemy. And I'm like, look, you okay. idiot. Once mm-hmm. again, a white guy who refuses to actually do any research or study so as he's come up with something new and I'm like, do you realize the astrological symbols are alchemical symbols? They're not ancient. The Babylonians did not use these symbols. The sun is the only consistent symbol. And the moon. Those yeah. two. Through from that carried over. But if you look at the astrological tablets from Babylon, Sumer, um, ancient Persia, they're not notated the way we notate astrology. We've only been using these symbols as they are since the 1500s 1600s why alchemy they're alchemical (laughs) symbols so Mm -hmm. this guy making his bold claims and people ask me about him all the time i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mention his name because i don't want you to watch him and don't take me in his videos i blocked him a long time ago because i think he's a cur look it up if you don't know what the word means he's a scurvy cur is what he is um And I hope somebody does send him this because he's an irresponsible schmuck who doesn't know what he's talking about. He even said Placidus isn't a good system. And I'm like, oh, that's because you can't do math, sir. Yeah. Too hard. Too hard. Too hard to understand. I'm a little baby. Can't understand a Placidus. And I'm not making fun of you guys who are learning. I'm making fun of somebody who's claiming to be an expert. Yeah. If you are claiming to be an expert and you don't understand it because you didn't put in the time and study, don't disparage a system. And of course, he doesn't want to debate anybody because he's a chicken. <laughs> and I love how fragile men are. <laughs> but they have the bald audacity to make claims that have zero veracity, which means no truth. So, if you want to leave a comment, you can just say Astro Lori thinks he's full of shit. And that would be funny because I've blocked him. <laughs> Take me all you want, but I'm not going to see it. Um, because he's he's full of crap. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And he has the ad- accuracy of a nudibranch. And I'm sorry to nudibranchs about that. Oh, Casey. Casey, you didn't stop me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it when I go off. I know. <laughs> I was just enjoying it. (laughs) Oh my God. So we've got that full moon coming up next week. Um, September just leads into a wild October. I think we'll see strikes continue uh, pretty much into Scorpio season. Uh, Scorpio season, they might resolve. We might see a resolution with the October 14th eclipse. I'll talk a little bit about that on next week's podcast. Um... Happy Libra season. Yes. So, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all we've got. I'll do uh, part two. We'll be out this afternoon, Monday, the 25th of September. Can you believe it? It's wild. It's wild. At the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I will say I have reading availability Mm -hmm. in October. So if you're looking to get a reading and you're listening with myself or Jen or Mackenzie, Mm -hmm. we are booking. They are booking and they are outstanding and you can save 150 bucks. 
Damn. on your readings with them when you use your patreon code it is linked up in the crunch reports so that is september's code uh it's really not going to change for november we're going to stick at that 150 off uh so make sure you book with them because they do book up like they go through waves so there'll be times where mm-hmm. they have you know it's a little slower than rush. others but you've been you've been really really booked You've been a busy girl. I've been busy. Yeah, I've been really busy. So I'm looking forward to having a little bit of time to make some more content. I'm still working on Mm -hmm. season two of my podcast. So more stuff coming. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. As always, it's a pleasure. And uh, yes, do book with Casey, Mackenzie, and Jennifer because they are outstanding and i don't just say that because i train them they they have taken their own individual astrology balls and are running with them and just doing beautifully i couldn't be more proud all righty this has been the awake space astrology podcast i'm laurie rivers with you and it is always my pleasure to give you inspiration to help you with your aspirations